Okay, so I'm continuing with the state and rule of law in a mixed economy, chapter three. So this is, I've already read uh, the chapter before, which was the state as entrepreneur. The chapter is called the state as entrepreneur. And this, this subheading is the public corporation. The classical definition of the modern public corporation was given by President Roosevelt in his message to Congress asking for the establishment of the Tennessee Valley Authority in 1933. A corporation clothed with power of government but possessed of the flexibility and initiative of a private enterprise, but it is chiefly in Britain that the concept of the contemporary public corporation has been elaborated, especially in the post-war nationalisation of industries. For the, class, for the essential characteristics of this modern type of public enterprise, I may perhaps refer to an earlier analysis of mine. First, each public corporation is separately established by statute, or in rare cases by charter. Second, the public corporation is an independent corporation with separate legal personality. Third, its administration is in the hands of a governing board appointed by the government, not by representative groups of interests. Fourth, the employees of the public corporation are not civil servants. Fifth, none of the public industrial corporations have shareholders. They are directed to balance revenue and expenditure over a period of years, and any profits generally have to be ploughed back into the development of the enterprise. They are commercially audited. Sixth, all public corporations are responsible to the government through the competent minister, and they are subject to his general direction and thought, and through the minister they are responsible to parliament. Seventh, they have in their day-to-day -day operations the character of other private legal corporate persons. They are fully liable in law and do not participate in any of the legal privileges and immunities of government. On the whole, the public corporations have a dual nature. In their commercial and managerial aspects, they resemble commercial companies and they have an essentially private law status. But in so far as they fulfil public tasks on the behalf of the government, they are public authorities and as such subject to control by the government within the limits defined by statute and development developed by convention. OK, that was an excerpt. So back. The British public corporation has served as a model for the numerous public enterprises constituted in other parts of the Commonwealth. Air India and the state owned steel corporations are among the many examples in India. Comparable concepts of the public corporation called Establissement Public in France and Ente Publico in Italy have been developed in these and, and a good many other countries. By far the most serious single problem that has emerged for the practical application of the theory of the public corporation is the tension between autonomy of management and the tendency of the superior government authority, i.e. the responsible minister, to interfere with the operation of the enterprise for political reasons. A. A state-owned air or railway line, oil refinery or steel mill can never be steel mill can never build, be completely detached from national policy. It is after all the public interest that is behind the constitution of such enterprises as state-owned rather than private corporations. But if the principle of commercial flexibility and managerial autonomy is to be taken seriously, it is incompatible with constant interferences by government. The typical British nationalisation statute, I mean, how relevant is that now with the BBC? Um, the typical British nationalisation statute contains a provision that the minister may give general policy direction. This is not often done openly, but there has been, with growing experience, a general criticism that ministers tend to meet privately with the directors of the enterprise and give policy directions as, as it were over a cocktail or behind closed doors. The lack of autonomy has been particularly felt in two respects, and this is true of Britain, France, India, and probably any other country that operates this type of public enterprise. First, considerations of national prestige or disguise subsidisation prevent the corporations from choosing freely their equipment according to commercial criteria. A well-known example is the pressure exercised some years ago on the BOAC to purchase a large number of the ex excellently designed but commercially doubtful VC-10s in, pre in preference to management's partial choice of American planes. The second is political pressure, usually through the minister, to keep prices of tariffs 
or tariffs below a level of minimum rentability. Railway tariffs are particularly exposed to this kind of pressure, which is largely responsible for the constant deficits of the excellently operated British, French and German national railway systems. Yeah. There has been a widespread demand by constructive critics of the operation of public enterprises for more managerial autonomy in the fixing of prices and tariffs. It is another nece necessary aspect of autonomy of management that the public corporations should not be dependent on periodic appropriations, but be equipped with permanent capital funds. The absence of such permanent capital assets is one of the principal weaknesses of federal public enterprises in the United States, which are now little more than government departments, dependent on recurrent appropriations and, and controlled by the Bureau of Budget and, and the Congress. But even if the proposed performs but even if the proposed reforms are carried out, if public corporations are granted greater financial independence and correspondingly great autonomy in their commercial operations, particularly in the decision on the purchase of equipment and the fixing of prices and tariffs, they can never be completely equated with private enterprise. Their very raison d'etre is the interest of the community in the conduct of certain operations, which is different from the motivations of private enterprises. These objectives are altogether outside the purview of privately owned and commercially directed private enterprise. We will deal with the rationale of public enterprise in a subsequent section.